Hey guys, welcome back to Vertice Models. Today we're painting Armon from the uh, Thousand Suns. And the first thing we're doing here is the white overspray. And this again will just help our colors be more vibrant when we start applying the layers onto them. And I want to be able to, you know, his, uh, his road pieces will be a uh, crusted sore with a warlock purple highlight and it really wouldn't show up that good on black you know because uh, those pigments are a little more they're not opaque when you're applying them especially lighter colors so with the white with the white highlight on the black it'll help show through a lot better so that's what he's looking like after that and now we'll be applying the crusted sword and I'm hitting him at an angle from the top that way well you'll see that way it catches the the edges of his robes and as you can see with that crusted sore over that white it makes it look a lot better than it would over just straight black we'll be doing the same thing to the back of his robe too The same principle we're just working it up the back of his robe there and it looks way more vibrant done like that So next we'll be using the Warlock Purple, which is really pink. <laughs> and we'll be going back in the same spots. And I'm holding it even more at a sharper angle. Just so I catch less edges to create that fade from light to dark. And I want to fade it a little more at the bottom. You know, it's all preference. As long as you know your, what uh, colors can fade well together but I was like the I like the way that looks and then I'll do the same thing to the this back of his cloak and I'm just looking at those raised areas on the back of his cloak there next we're using skeleton bone and we're spraying the underside of his cloak After that we're using crystal blue and this will be the first layer for his armor pieces. So his feet, his shoulder pads, his backpack, and his uh, disc. And if you're wondering why his head ain't there, I'm basing his head a different color. So I was going to airbrush it separately. But the, we're using crystal blue just on his armor pieces and uh, the top of his uh, disc that he comes on which I paint that separately you'll see that later in the video so yeah hitting the front of his chest piece Oxide from Citadel Paints. I think it's called Nylac, I'm not sure. But this color looks really good over the crystal blue. And this will be our top layer for the armor pieces. And again, applying it to uh, the disc as well. I wasn't able to film the disc, but same principle as the armor. 
and we're, uh, th then again we're just being really careful not to get it on the purple I like to use the airbrush on like short bursts that way it just sprays out a little you know and after you practice a while you'll get really good at being able to control your airbrush and then for his head I'm gonna be airbrushing that with a mixture I do a mixture of uh, plate mail and weapon bronze from army painter it makes a really cool antique looking gold and I'll just mix those one to one that's what it's looking like in the pot and I'll just base the whole head that color the majority of it will be that color so this just makes the workflow easier The next we'll be using that same mixture and trimming out his armor. As you can see we did the same thing to the disc. And this is what he's looking like after he's got the gold trim on. And now I'll be using plate mail and we're just basing the uh, his thrusters on his backpack the exhaust on the bottom of his backpack is a uh, staff handle and we'll be basing the uh, the spikes on the disc with plate mail as well So after that's every, everything's based and we're just looking at the disc now, that's what it's looking like, and that's what it's looking like after all the metals based. Then we'll be using skeleton bone and we're painting the, uh, the skull on his shoulder pad. I think he's got a couple more uh, bone parts. He's got a little bird skull hanging off his staff that will paint skeleton bone as well. And in the Ponca City Blackwell area, 68 degrees today. So after that we'll use ash gray and we're basing the horns on his staff and the uh, his horns on his uh, actual head too. That's what that's looking like. We're using uh, fur brown now, and we're going to be basing his holster for his pistol, his uh, belt right there, and the, uh, the sack hanging off his uh, staff. And as you can see, we we uh, did the ash gray on his head as well. Next, we'll be using mummy robes, and we're painting the uh, sash around his waist, his belt, 
and also the um, the tassels hanging off his head on his helmet. So that's what he's looking like now. Got his belt painted, got his leather painted, and then I painted his, uh, he's got a little feather hanging off, I just painted that with pure red. Next we're washing, and we're using strong tone, and we're just doing all the leather pieces, all the bone, all the, um, the trim pieces, the gold pieces, we're just using strong tone on all of it. And that's what he's looking like after that wash. We do the same thing to the head as well. And the same thing is to the disc. So after that we'll be using dark tone and we'll be washing his gloves and all the metal pieces his staff handle any chains hanging off of him his exhaust on the back of his backpack and then we'll be doing the spikes on the disc as well That's what everything's looking like so far. Pretty cool. We washed uh, his armor with blue tone from Army Painter. It's a darker blue and it looks good on the oxide. Next we'll be using the uh, flesh wash. And we're just going over the uh, the mummy robe that we did on the tassels and his horns on his head. So you put the flesh wash over the uh, ash gray and the mummy robe pieces. And then we'll be going back after that dries and dry brushing it with ash gray. This just leaves it darker in the spots underneath and it has a really cool effect on the horns. Then we'll be using mummy robes and we're just painting uh, painting the pre-glowing areas. So like this little flask down here I'm going to have glowing. All the uh, little orbs on his chest I'm going to have glowing. So we're painting it with mummy robes. That way our, our glow color will be nice and opaque on top. And I'll be using the airbrush to uh, spray the oxide on top of those orbs. We did the same thing for the eyes as well. We did we painted those with uh, the mummy robes and we just airbrush you know it's one or two little taps and it has a really cool glow effect. The oxide is already a technical paint and the way it draws is the effect it gives along with the white pre-highlight and it makes it look cool so in the uh, beginning you know when I was doing the white highlight on the legs and the back of his cloak well he's got this little spell he's casting or whatever coming off of his hand and what I wanted to do was um, same principle a white pre-highlight you know, have the have it fade from white to black, you know, before I apply the actual color. So the undertone we're using is Wizard Orb, and I'm basically just basing the whole back end of it. I want to have it fade from this Wizard Orb blue-green color to a straight bright green. I'm not too worried about overspray because I want it to have that lighting effect on it. 
So the overspray just adds to that. And then here we're using the uh, Jungle Green by Army Painter. And you know I left that front part white so when I hit it with that green it's nice and bright. Because the green is already not as opaque as, you, as your normal colors. And that's what he's looking like. He's basically done. Uh, I just made him a base and you'll see that in a minute. But uh, yep that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I noticed you know I've been getting some subscribers lately. That's pretty cool that y'all are liking my videos. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll be trying to post more regularly from now on. Uh, hopefully once a week I'll be getting a video out. But uh, yeah, thank you again and bye.